Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's excellent to have you here as always, and thank you for watching. Today I've got a video that comes from multiple inspirations, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're going to cover two of them here at the very beginning, and then we'll touch on one in the middle, and then we'll wrap up with the last one. As of the filming of today's video, it is the middle of deer gun season in the state of Ohio. We only have one week for that. You're watching this video pretty much after the season has concluded, but I started filming it last week in preparation. I was out testing my gun. I have basically one rifle that I use for this purpose, and that's pretty much the only thing I use it for. In my strange brain, I was like, you know what, I just realized something. I shoot this gun so little that the first person to clean this gun might be an heir, as in somebody inherits this gun down the line and might actually clean this thing. And my battery is already ready to die, so I'm going to fix that. This is the original battery from the camera that I'm filming this on, and I think that she's toast, boys and girls. It was, I tested it before I started, it said that it didn't need any more juice, and well, it died immediately. So I think it's time to retire this thing in the wastebasket. But the next inspiration for today's video is that my friend Tim from Military Arms Channel put out a video, well, I think it was like last week, it's probably two weeks by the time this video airs about barrel breaking and cleaning barrels. And the TLDR on that video, if you didn't see it, is basically that a large percentage of the crap that people do to either break in their barrel or clean the barrel is bullshit, ineffective, or counterproductive. And I agree. So I was just digging in this side pocket because I felt something in it. I haven't worn this coat in like a year. So I was like, what's in that pocket? So first and foremost, a CR-123 battery, a Duracell, which I don't usually see these on the shelf. I have no idea where this came from. A plate from a Magpul Mo grip and <laughs> dough juice. What's the weirdest three things that you've ever found in a random pocket? Nope, nope. Yet another CR-123. So there were four things. Really? Sure that there's not. I, I have no idea. This rifle is a Midwest Industries MI-15F. It is built around a 16-inch Criterion barrel, and I think at this point in time, Criterion pretty much speaks for itself. But I've had this rifle for about six years. Well, that may not actually be accurate. I'm not going to go back and figure out exactly how long I've owned this rifle, and I don't think it's really relevant how long somebody's had something. It's relevant how they've used it. I've owned that rifle for 25 years, and I've never had a problem. Dude just fired, like, one box of shells through it the entire time. Anyway, what is relevant on this particular rifle is that the round count on this bore is going to be well into the five figures. And I haven't kept a log book. I don't do that sort of thing. I've only kept one log book ever, and I don't keep it anymore. <laughs> I don't have that count, so I'm not going to quote that number, but well over the 10K mark. So that in and of itself is not relevant to today's video. But what is, is that in that time, this bore has never seen any type of cleaning whatsoever. I have never put a cleaning rod down this for any purpose, not even to remove a stuck case. So what I thought we could do in today's video is look at the effects of cleaning on the bore as far as accuracy is concerned. And to do that, I'm gonna go through the painstaking, excruciating process of removing stepwise each of the potential offending compounds that you might find in your barrel. But before we do that, we have to hear a word from our sponsor, which is Sonoran Desert Institute. Have you ever considered a career in the firearms industry? or wanted to learn more about a particular discipline as it relates to guns. Perhaps you're under intense pressure from your family to go to college, but you realize that's a really bad investment because the only things that you're good at are guns and basket weaving. If any of that is you, then a course of study at SDI might be right up your alley. What did you major in in school? Guns. Sonoran Desert Institute is a DEAC accredited online college focusing on programs and courses pertinent to firearms. So if you're into gun repair, ballistics, or learning about firearms, SDI might be something you want to look into. They even have funding plans and payment options available for anybody who doesn't have a pile of money laying around, like most of us. So if you're interested, you can catch up with them at sdi.edu. So some things that you might find in your barrel that weren't there when you bought it. Or at least you hope there wasn't a whole lot of it there in your barrel when you bought it. There are really four of them that I can think of, four different species. The first one would be some kind of residue from either lacquer or sealant. So lacquer being around the case and sealant being around the junctions of the cartridge. The second one would be some kind of residue from the propellant. 
When you burn things, some ash is produced. Number three, lead. And lastly, number four is copper. For today's video, we're going to ignore number one, the lacquer or sealant, because to the best of my knowledge, there has never been a single round of lacquer containing or sealant containing ammunition fired through that rifle. The methodology of today's test is gonna look something like this, and we're gonna keep it uniform across the board throughout the entire test. We're gonna first fire some defouling shots through the bore, and then we're gonna do an accuracy test consisting of three groups at five rounds a piece. So our initial baseline brings up another inspiration for today's video. This barrel has started to throw around every once in a while, and you can see that there's a, basically a body of the group and then some outliers here and there. While this ammunition that we were using isn't match grade by any stretch of the imagination, this was a sub minute rifle with the same ammo out of the box. I wanna see if we can challenge my own philosophy here and determine if this is a cleaning related issue. So onto our first cleaning, which is going to be powder residue. So powder residue is gonna be made up of three different things, unburnt powder, partially burnt powder, and fully burnt powder. Now, when we're talking about modern smokeless powder, in my opinion, I don't think this is something that you need to focus on removing from your bore. What we need to focus on, this particular species, is removing it from our action. Over time, that stuff can layer up and fill up tolerant spaces in our action. As it hardens, it can then occlude and impede the movement of those moving parts, causing a malfunction. That's why we remove that stuff from our action. When we're talking about the bore, if it's in the grooves, then you're going to have a really hard, fast, hot thing that's going to be running right across it. It's going to push it out of the way. It can only get so full before it's just going to get pushed out of the way. And it's not a, something that you need to worry about in smokeless powder. The reason this has traditionally been removed from bores is a holdover from the black powder days. The byproducts of burning black powder are very hydrophilic. That can partition water against the steel of your barrel and given the other crap in that water against the steel can cause corrosion. Modern smokeless powder, the majority of that stuff is very tiny molecules that don't really sequester any water. Also, most of it is converted to gas so you get very, very little of it hanging out. Anyway, to remove it, we're gonna treat it like dirt. Hot, soupy water uh, with some patches. Accuracy, yeah. Pretty much the same. As to be expected, propellant residue from modern GSR is not something that contributes to accuracy problems. On to lead, and in this particular instance, lead is a little bit tricky because most of the products that you're gonna purchase are also going to attack copper. So reaching into my brain from a previous lifetime of some chemistry, the thing that I come up with is acetic acid. Now the thing about acetic acid is that it can also damage steel in high concentrations. So we need to be careful about the exposure time to concentrated acid in our barrel. So what I did is I took some glacial acetic acid and diluted it down to 50%, and then I caulked the barrel shut. And if you don't know anything about caulk, silicone caulk, my goodness gracious. I'm trying really hard to put the L in there. Now here's the thing about acetic acid. It's also bad for caulk in that it will degrade it. So one of the Reasons it smells funny when you squirt the stuff out of the tube. Man, it's bad. One of the reasons it smells funny is because sometimes it's made with acetic acid to keep it semi-solid. If I have a volume in that barrel, then it only lasts so long before it basically burns through and it'll self-drain. After that happened, I ran some glacial acetic on patches and then immediately cleaned it with water. So accuracy, yeah, I mean a little bit of improvement, but not something that it's like, man, we got to get all that out of there. We were using a full metal jacket round. Well, if we look at a full metal jacket projectile, what that means is that the jacket goes from the base all the way to the tip. Now there is a small space there at the base, I'll show you a close up of that, where some lead can come off the back because you've got really hot gases that are pushing against it and some of that can come off that way but basically that's the only way that you can get lead in your barrel onto copper onto controversy you want copper in your barrel do not scrub the copper from your barrel leave it alone for a couple reasons but the one that is relevant for this one is going to be smoothing out any of the defects in your barrel so i don't care how well the barrel's made 
I don't care how well it's maintained, you're gonna have microscopic defects in that barrel just because of the machining process. That copper, as it goes over it, is going to smear into those spaces and fill in those defects. Most of us have walls that are made out of drywall, and when that drywall sheet goes up, it looks like shit, okay? <laughs> All the screw holes are visible. They go over and mud that thing and then paint over it. The copper is the mud. It fills in the defects and makes it nice and smooth. And that's what you want your projectile to experience as it goes down the barrel. Well, in the interest of science, today we're gonna remove that copper from the barrel given my protests. And there's really gonna be two sources of copper in your barrel. The first one is going to be copper metal as in stuff that has come off the jacket of that projectile and then has literally been smeared just like you were brushing it on or something like that onto the surface. The other one is gonna be a copper salt or ionized copper, something that has come in contact with either oxygen to oxidize it or perhaps some water, moisture, some other compound that was resultant from the propellant process, something like that. There's ionized copper in that barrel. So anything that looks blue or green, that's gonna be ionized copper. That stuff is highly soluble in water. So it is already out from the previous treatments. And in particular, acetic acid treatment also is going to attack that. So there should be no ionized copper left. We're going strictly after that copper metal. And the thing that I think of when I think of removing copper is gonna be ammonia and I hate ammonia, it stinks. Aqueous ammonia can be purchased at any store, readily available in the correct concentrations to do this. So I went ahead and performed the same treatment, and surprisingly, it only lasted like 20 minutes before it burned through. I didn't know that ammonia could go through uh, caulk, that it would actually burn through caulk like that. I came downstairs to a blue puddle in my catch container, which is to be expected because copper hydroxide is blue. And then from there, what I did was go ahead and run some ammonia patches, much to my chagrin, ran some ammonia patches, and then again, treated it with water. And accuracy, the same. I know that you're shocked by that. It made no difference whatsoever. And you might say, Kurt, you just can't shoot. And that, sir, is a valid criticism. Yes, it is. I'm not gonna deny that whatsoever, but that's what I thought. And it's like, oh man, I'm really shooting like crap today on day one. So I took my Seekins precision rifle and shot this group. Same ammunition, same scope, same can, same day. The, the difference here, because that bore has never been scrubbed either, is an order of magnitude on the round count. That gun maybe has 2,000 rounds through it. I don't even think I've ever cleaned it, like even cleaned the action on that gun, let alone the bore. Which brings me to my last inspiration for today's video, which was a few weeks ago, I was contacted by a local guy. He was having problems with his kid's rifle. It was a, a couple days before Ohio's youth season, which is only one weekend, which is absolutely criminal. Don't get me going. Obviously he needed to get it fixed in a hurry. So I'm the guy to contact. And he didn't know a whole lot about the rifle admittedly, other than it was assembled by his fud tarted co-worker. And in the process of cleaning it before the season, the rifle spontaneously disassembled itself and broke a few components. Now, this is why I suggest that you purchase rifles from a reputable manufacturer, like VS Ordnance. Sorry about that, guys. I saw an opportunity and I had to take it. But which brings me to my last point, which is... You don't need to clean your rifle before the season. What we should focus on is functionality of the rifle. Take the rifle out of the case when you're ready for the season, if it's one that you don't use on a regular basis, and shoot the thing. Does it cycle? Does it hit where you want it to hit? If it doesn't do one of those two things, then don't mess with it. It's working fine, provided that it doesn't have any like parts breakages or anything like that. But to be honest, when we're talking about a deer rifle in the state of our Ohio, they can only hold three rounds of ammunition, which doesn't mean that you're shooting it a whole lot. That basically means clean it never. Okay, it's going to be fine. Particularly, you don't need to mess with that bore because there's going to be plenty of other stuff to keep rust and things like that from forming in your barrel in the form of GSR, lead, and copper.